Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how when you are making a Unity character and you're trying to move the rigid body, that you can have it interact with collision shapes in the game so that when you come up against an object like this that has a collision shape, it will actually stop your player from being able to move. So we can see in this invisible wall object that we have a rigid body 2D and a box collider 2D. So any object in your game is going to need some kind of collider and some kind of physics body if you want to be able to bump up into it and not be able to just pass right through it. So in this case, this is a static object because it's not going to move in the game. And our collision shape as a well, let's go into scene view here so we can actually see that our collision shape goes right around this object. So when we actually set up collision detection, we should be able to have our player stopped there. And we can see on our player object as well that we need to have a rigid body 2D. And this should be kinematic because we are controlling the movement in script, but it is going to move around the screen. A dynamic rigid body would be impacted by forces like the default unity gravity instead of uh, just saying move the player by a set number of pixels. Moving the player by a set number of pixels would be more kinematic. So we have a capsule collider for this character, but you could just as easily use a box collider. So when you have those components, you should be able to set up your script for collisions. So let's go take a look at this player script. I'm just going to open it up right here. And let's come down to our fixed update. So the default fixed update, when you just want to move a character around the screen, you would use the move position function. And this is taking the current position plus the amount and direction that we want to move the player towards. So as long as we don't care about physics, that will work all right. But then if we want to go one step beyond that, then we would want to use this move player function that I've written and we'll talk about that. So this returns true or false depending on whether uh, the move was successfully completed and it would return false if there was a collision. So let's take a look at this move player function. So you can see what we're doing is using the cast function on the rigid body, which is that component that we added to the player. So you just have to get reference to that up here at the top. You can see up here private rigid body 2D RB. And then when the game starts, we get the component that is attached to the game object. So using that rigid body, we run the cast function. And this is how we check for collisions. So there's many different overrides for the cast function. But the one I'm using uh, takes the first parameter as the direction in which you are looking uh, for potential collisions, the movement filter, which is a list of settings that would include things like what layers you would consider an object to be valid for collision on. So you might have a ground layer in your game or an enemy's layer, and you want to make sure that your movement filter is set up properly so that it makes sense for these moves. That movement filter, by the way, I'm declaring that up here at the top, contact filter 2D movement filter. And if I show you that in Unity, uh, we can see on the player script, we have this movement filter. So this is what it actually looks like. So you can have layer mask, and you can check the different layers, the physics layers that you want to be able to interact with. So currently, since this is pretty much a fresh project, the objects would be on the default layer, not in these other things. So we're just checking on the default layer, everything else is just the defaults here. Okay, and then in addition to that, you need a list or an array of cast collisions. So this isn't the collisions that have already happened. This is just a place to store the collisions that are going to be picked up by this cast function. So if I go up here to the top of this script as well, uh, we can see we have that new list of raycast hit 2Ds. So when a collision is detected, it gets returned as a raycast hit 2D, and we'll store it in this cast collisions and see if there's any in it on each cycle of uh, doing these casts. So the last one is how much we want to move the player. So we have our move speed times our time dot fixed delta time, which is the amount of time between each uh, fixed update function. So the difference between fixed update and update is that fixed update um, expects to have the same amount of time between frames, whereas it would be variable in the update function. So generally, you want to use fixed update instead of update when you're doing physics things like moving a character or checking for collisions. So then the last thing about uh, that amount is you can also add a collision offset. And uh, I've heard this is recommended so that your player doesn't get stuck in an object by moving just a little bit too far. So this collision offset serves as a buffer to make sure that your player's collision shape doesn't end up accidentally overlapping uh, the collision targets 
collision shape and preventing your character from being able to move. So it keeps you from getting stuck. So when we have all these parameters, uh, we just run the cast function and it's going to store all of the raycast hit 2Ds in this cast collisions. And the cast function also returns the number of collisions which are found. So rather than taking the count off of the cast collisions, we can just take int count here and check if there was any collisions. So if there were no collisions, then we're going to go ahead with the move. So we can just calculate how much we want to move. So we can just calculate our move vector, which includes our direction, and then our amount and the time between frames. Our move speed times time dot fixed delta time gives us our distance multiplied by the direction. And then we just run the move position function here. So it's the same function calls up here. It's just that now we're making sure that there were no collisions that should stop us from being able to do that. And since there were no collisions, we return true because the move was successful. Otherwise, we would just return false because since there was collisions, we don't want to allow our player to make that move. And this is just a little debugging uh, bit here to see what were the hits, what were we colliding with, which is totally optional. And, and you wouldn't actually need this for any gameplay reasons. So with all of that, we're just going to go up here and I'll comment out the original move position so we don't double move. And now we're moving with move player instead of this initial call to move position. And now we can go ahead and hit play and watch as we'll be able to have a collision over here. Now, uh, one thing that you might notice, though, is that if we're pressing two directions at once, we can't really slide along the object. So right now I'm pressing down with S and to the right with D. And we just kind of get stuck here because uh, the collision is looking kind of down into the right, which is obviously going to conflict with that collision shape. So if we kind of take a look here down into the right, yeah, that would definitely hit the collision shape there. But for the sake of making your movement feel nice in the game, you might be wanting to allow your character to slide along an object. So even if there would be a collision in a diagonal direction, maybe there's not a collision in an up direction. So we want to let our character move up. And likewise, the same if we were up here, we'd want to allow our character to move left and right, even though down or down to the right and down to the left, there would be a collision. Uh, so that's the last part of this script here. So if I uncomment this out, you'll notice that we're running the move player function here. But rather than just taking the move import, we're only taking the x uh, factor of that vector. And then down here, we're only doing the y direction. So basically, if there was not a success in allowing the player to move, we'll see, well, what if we could just move left and right? So then we take the input vector and we assume there's no y movement. We only move left and right on the x axis. And if we can't move left and right, then we try a third time where we don't move left and right at all, but we move on the y function. So we're just reusing the same function three times and just putting in a different direction for the movement. Everything else would be exactly the same. So now with that, we can hit play. And if I press D to go to the right, obviously we had a collision here. But if I hit two directions at once, there's going to be a non-zero value for the Y if I start pressing W. So now you can see we can actually slide along the Y axis while pressing D at the same time. So when one raycast fails, it checks the straight up direction and the straight left right direction and sees if a move is possible. And that allows us to be able to have a, a smoother move around this object. And so now it's much easier for our character to move around objects like this, which makes the movement feel a lot more fluid. So in a nutshell, that is how you can do some basic collision checking for your kinematic rigid bodies and inside of Unity 2D. I'll put a link to the player script in the description if you'd want to try out the same code. I hope this video was helpful to all of you. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see some of you in my future Unity content.